Welcome back, my friends, to the D-Rate the Hate podcast. I am your host, Wilk Wilkinson, your blue-collar sage, calming outrage and helping to navigate a world divided by fog and those who would spread that fear, outrage, and grievance. Each week, I'm sharing stories from my path and using the power of conversation and collaboration with my many great guests. Together, we chart a course toward understanding, bridging divides, and fostering a community where wisdom prevails over discord. Friends, it really is about bettering the world one attitude at a time. We did not create the hate, but together we can derate the hate. The only good thing about a bad attitude is we have the ability as individuals to change it. For me, it starts with gratitude and personal accountability. I am so incredibly grateful that you have taken the time to join me for another powerful DTH episode. Please remember to subscribe and share the DTH podcast with your network of friends. If you would like to support the show, check out the support us page on the D-Rate the Hate website. With that, my friends, let's get to it. All right, folks, this is a uh, this is a real special episode. Uh, A lot of people know when I do the D-Rate the Hate podcast, I typically only have one, maybe two guests. Uh, Tonight, I am truly honored to have four guests and. and, and, and it's more than an honor because it's four people that, that I admire uh, incredibly, um, people that I, uh, you know, I've had conversations with before. Uh, one Mr. Daryl Davis has been on the D-Rate the Hate podcast before, and, uh, and then my friend Brian Bartney. We've, uh, we've had a number of conversations never on the air, but, uh, but tonight I have uh, Daryl Davis, Brian Bartney, Lori Warren, and Letitia Kim have joined me on the D-Rate the Hate podcast. So uh, welcome, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you all joining me today uh, for this incredible conversation and important conversation. It's our pleasure. All right. So the reason that we're here today is because there is a new organization uh, launching this month. It's going to be called the Pro-Human Foundation. Now, people who don't... uh, uh, may not be familiar with this group. I, I mean, uh, like I said, I, I know people as they hear these names, uh, you know, are, are going to be familiar with uh, in many ways, especially in the circles uh, that we run in. The people that listen to the DTH podcast are very familiar with the organization FAIR. I've had uh, I've had a number of people and a number of conversations with people associated with the Foundation Against Intolerance and Racism on this podcast. and. Uh, and now I'm excited to find out that uh, some of my favorite people are starting this organization called the Pro Human Foundation. So, Lori Warren is going to be the executive director uh, of the of the uh, Pro Human Foundation, and and then the uh, the trio: Daryl Davis, Brian Bartning, and Letitia Kim, the founders of of, of Pro Human Foundation. So, we're going to get into this conversation, look at what the Pro Human Foundation is, what uh, you know, what their goal is, what their mission is with this and, and, and the backstory for what what made this thing happen. So let's start with uh, Lori, since you are uh, you're going to be the executive director. Let's uh, let's get your story first. And I'm just going to go uh, around with how, how I see you all on my screen. So Lori Warren, take it away. Let me know what is uh, what is the Pro Human Foundation? And uh, we'll start right there. Well, Wilk, why don't I start by telling you what our mission is? Um, Our mission is to promote the foundational truth that we are all unique human beings united by our shared humanity. And um, I, um, I, I have come to this organization. I have come to this work, first of all, because I'm a mom. Um, I'm, I, I'm doing it for my daughter. Um, And when I when I when I first started um, doing this work, I, it really came from a concern over sort of the um, identitarian way of thinking about things. I noticed so much toxic polarization happening in our world today, um, as well as people not talking to each other but talking at each other, um, and so these were matters of concern for me. And that's what brought me to this work, and that's what I'm uh, I'm I'm excited about addressing with the Pro Human Foundation. 
Very good. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. I mean, that's that's a battle that we're all fighting these days, right? This this identitarian. It's something I've been talking about a lot, obviously, on the on the Deer Eight Date podcast is is this toxic toxic identitarianism that's that's going around? How everybody's being tossed in a box and 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 then you know everybody loses that individualism that that we have that that in my opinion is one of the most important things that we we do possess as as an individual, right? So, uh, uh, Letitia, what is your role with the Pro Human Foundation, other than founder, of course, or, or co-founder? But uh, I, I know with Fair, you, you did, uh, you know, your your role was was very big in the legal aspect of it. Um, what uh, what what is your role going to be here in the Pro Human Foundation? Uh, thanks. That's a great question. Um, my role is uh, basically a board member and an officer. Uh, so I'm the secretary uh, treasurer. Um, on the board of directors. Um, and so I think that uh, gives, with, along with Bynum and Daryl, I think that gives us a really great opportunity to keep the organization uh, tight um, and on mission. We're not working with a giant uh, board here. We're not working with the giant staff here. And we have very clear, articulated, specific goals. Um, so um, in terms of what brought me to the Pro Human Foundation, of course, I, I came you know, via FAIR. Um, and I have a very similar story to to Lori's. I too, um, you know, um, after spending several years uh, practicing law, I had children. Um, I quit uh, to focus on my children. And in around 2018, um, I started noticing, really by accident, uh, some things that were appearing in the curriculum that were, at, at the time, they sounded innocuous enough. You know, we're going to study identity in this unit, um, but they went in, in a direction that um, my husband and I were not anticipating. Um, and really that was not consistent with our values. Now, I'm in a multiracial family. My husband's Korean. Um, I'm mostly Mediterranean and my kids are a mix. So it really isn't even clear uh, where my children fall on this, um, you know, uh, on this matrix that's been adopted by the identitarian movement. Um, and um, for a variety of reasons, um, it, it struck me as being perhaps well-intentioned, but not the way forward, um, you know, particularly given the times that we were living in. It really seemed to explode, you know, around the time that we had just gone through a very partisan election. Um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, I think our culture at large was, um, you know, it was, it, it was basically putting fire on, you know, on, 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 on very dry kindling and boom. Um, so for, for a while, I just thought I was, you know, alone that my husband and I objected to it, but, you know, I live in San Francisco. And so I figured, well, nobody objects to this, but, you know, but me. Um, and uh, gradually I found a small community of people who, you know, felt similarly to, to, to the way I feel that we do need to address these pressing issues of, of racism um, and oppression where it exists, both in the present times and in the past. Uh, but we have to do it in a way that honors our shared humanity and does not engender uh, so much uh, anger and hatred, which we saw on full display in 2020, 2021 with the school board uh, meetings that just went crazy. I mean, schools and parents are supposed to be partners. Um, and yet we saw them turn into absolute adversaries. Uh, so, um, you know, being it fair for me, um, part of my role there was to help, you know, ideally patch that over um, and try to create bridges. And then, you know, when bridges really weren't possible to, you know, to then to proceed through litigation, which really wasn't commonly done at FAIR. Um, and then, you know, when um, Bayan approached me about joining the Prohuman Foundation, I was I was thrilled uh, because, again, our, our mission is very limited um, and it's very clear and it fills a needed hole right now in our K through 12 system. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely does. It's uh, it, it's one of those things. and. And, you know, you brought up a really good point there, Letitia, and we can get into a little bit more, but, but, uh, that, that's one of the things that, that it has really bugged me. And I know bugged a lot of people that I've talked to, uh, about this, this whole identitarian thing and, and being placed in boxes and stuff like that. What happens to the interracial, you know, families the the families are, or, or mixed race families, right. Um, and, and, and where do they go and how awkward does that make, especially the kids, because that's one of the things that, that that I, I am so passionate about in, in, in so many of these different things is, is how does it affect the children and what's going to be the long-term effect of that? And, and did anybody think about, 
the the toxicity that that these boxes are to people who you know are like well i should i can fit in that box and i can fit in that box and, and if i don't choose that one are they going to be mad and, and 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 how awkward that is for for kids and that 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 just that bugs me so much so um yeah and that is increasing really because i i believe i recently read that um 20 percent of new marriages are interracial so yep. it's a rapidly growing family structure that absolutely. just can't be absolutely up. no it, it, it is so all right my buddy daryl davis such a, such a good uh, i'm so glad to have you back on the show man we uh it's been too long since we talked yeah, it's it's great to see you, uh, Daryl. And um, uh, yeah, there's there's a there's a number of uh, of things that uh, I, I'm I'm looking forward to asking you, uh, especially with regard to this project because it's actually you know it's something that 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 we talked about nearly two years ago in in uh, in the work that you, that you have have been doing have always done. Uh, you know, one of the things that y- you mentioned in in our, our our first conversation and and I've seen so much out of your work is the the real solution to battling ignorance and ignorance leading to fear fear leading to hate and hate leading to uh you know hate leading to uh uh anger and anger leading to violence that that solution to the ignorance comes through education and exposure right education and, and and getting people familiar with um people that that they normally probably wouldn't interact with or maybe haven't been exposed to so daryl tell me uh, about your role now with with the uh with the pro human foundation and and what it really was for you that that kind of steered you in in this direction and and how uh, how you Brian and, and Letitia came up with the uh, came up with this plan for the Pro Human Foundation. Okay, sure. Well, I uh, had the pleasure of uh, well, you know, I've been in in the racial reconciliation arena, if you will, for now uh, as of 2024 for about 42 years. I've always been interested in that kind of thing and been doing that kind of work. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Brian Bartning, you know, several years ago. I was referred to him by by a mutual acquaintance of ours, and he contacted me. And through our conversation, we found that we had a lot in common and a great passion for bringing people together and, and through conversations and solving differences. So he invited me to be on the uh, board of advisors for the organization FAIR, Foundation Against uh, Intolerance and Racism. And I remain on, on that uh, board of advisors. But you know, new doors open and things like that. And I'm I'm proud also to be on this board of advisors of uh, of uh, the Pro Human Foundation or board of directors, I should say, on the of the uh, Pro Human Foundation. And we are like like uh, Laurie and Letitia have pointed out, we are a smaller, more targeted organization. So we we concentrate on solving you know not a whole lot of problems, but a limited amount of problems, and move from one to the other rather than be as big as we were coming out of a uh, fair. So I think, you know, there's room for all kinds of organizations. You need those that are, that are, you know, laser focused and those that are wider focused. And we are the laser focused version. Very nice. Very nice. Laser focused. And when you say laser focused and, and, and uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll throw this to, to buy in, but um you know, obviously, this is going to focus more on 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 education than um, than more on education, less on litigation, right? More, uh, more, more uh, in- engagement with with uh, with youngsters, right? Getting uh, going right to uh, going back to our conversation uh, a, a while back, Daryl. When we when we talk to how do we how do we address this? We get to the nucleus, right? Root cause problem solving stamp it out before it gets to the the hate anger violence that riot situation so so Brian, talk to me a little bit about oh go ahead sorry daryl no no we're just talking about you know what you're saying is being proactive you know go to the nucleus don't don't put a band-aid on on the uh, symptom you know fix the root cause very nice absolutely i, I mean it's just it, it seems 
it seems to me and probably everybody else on, on, on this this panel today, it seems so simple, yet it's so seldom done. And I, and I just don't know why, because it, it, it is one of those things that we can look at it and, and it's like, OK, well, why, why do we always mess around with with the aftermath? Why, why are we always going after uh, the, these things after they happen? Why don't we try and address them before? So, Brian, talk to me a little bit about that. Talk to me about, you know, how how, how this started for you and, um, and 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 what's that backstory there for you, Brian? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Wilk. And thanks for having us on. Um, you know, for me, I think similar to Letitia and Lori, I'm, I'm a parent and, um, you know, and I saw in my case, it was in 2020. Um, I saw my kid's school, I think in a, in a well-intentioned, but misguided way, um, you know, embrace what what I would call a more anti-human approach to addressing real issues of you know racism, bias, um, you know systemic issues that do exist, um, and and when I started looking into you know where these ideas were coming from, it it just really raised a whole bunch of concerns for me, and and to me it felt you know somewhat existential because um, I think similar to to so Letitia, you know, in my case, I'm actually, I have a mixed race background. My father is Mexican and Yaqui. Um, I actually did my 23andMe and I found that I'm 2% West African even, which was kind of cool. Um, so I have an ancestor from the 1800s from Africa. Um, you know, but I think that's more and more typical in America to have, um, you know, people who have mixed backgrounds. As, and as Letitia said, um, you know, the, the, the statistics are you know, are, are pretty clear that that's the direction that this country is heading. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, and so, you know, this kind of identitarian um, group identity based approach to addressing racism, you know, to, to me seems not only backwards, but also, you know, completely um, misses the point, you know, because I think more and more um, children are, you know, are of mixed ancestry. And I think that that's, that's, that's the future that we we'd all like to see. I think is that that people are, um, you know, are brothers and sisters and and see each other that way regardless of skin color, um, and and that we grow not not that we're there yet, but that we grow to see skin color as as something that doesn't define a person, um, you know. And so you know, it doesn't mean that racism doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that these aren't real issues that need to be addressed. But I think where we you know, where we, um, you know, where I came to see an issue and I think where the Pro-Human Foundation would see, you know, would, would take a different path than, than, you know, some have taken to addressing these issues is that, you know, really the, the path forward is to recognize that every person is a unique individual, that we need to take the time to invest in getting to know that person. Um, and we mm -hmm, are all mm -hmm. part of one human race. And so by emphasizing unique identity, shared humanity, um, you know, we see that as the path forward, you know, and I think, you know, Daryl has been, you know, been very clear that, you know, one of his inspirations and, you know, maybe his biggest inspiration has been Martin Luther King, you know, and I think that MLK, you know, really did lay out that articulate clearly the pro-human philosophy, um, you know, so I, I, you know, I don't know that, that what we're advocating for is brand new. You know, I don't even know that Martin Luther King was the first one to, to, to recognize this philosophy. I think this is a philosophy that, you know, that really, um, you know, has, has its roots even further back than that. Um, so, so for, for me, this is something that is, um, you know, is, is something that I'm passionate about, that I care about deeply, that I see as, you know, is truly existential. And, you know, and I'd like to be part of, um, you know, offering proactive solutions. You know, I think Daryl has said pro-human is proactive and, and, I, and I completely agree with that. And I, and I would also say, you know, what brings us together, you know, other than the fact that I, I love these people, these, you know, the, the, uh, Letitia, Lori, Daryl, I think are just wonderful people. I've had the pleasure of getting to know over the years, um, you know, but I think that all of us are problem solvers. You know, we're not, we're not reactionaries. We're not the kind of people to, you know, to get angry and lash out. You know, I think that our approach is to take a more measured, um, 
you know, measured approach to understanding problems and then trying to do something to solve them. So, you know, so I would say, you know, we are very much a group of problem solvers. The focus of the ProHuman Foundation is on K through 12. And that was really what, you know, what, um, you know, inspired me to start FAIR in the first place is, um, you know, is just the experience that I had with my kids' school. Um, you know, I think there is no no legal arm of the ProHuman Foundation. You know, we are not a civil um, liberties or civil rights organization. We are an, an education organization, you know, and I think that our, you know, our goal is to, you know, is to really be uh, a light in the darkness and, you know, and to offer educational materials um, and, and support for teachers and students um, around the, the pro-human approach. Yeah, and I love that. Uh, I, I absolutely love that. Again, I'll, I'll go back to what I, I, I said uh, you know, earlier in this conversation. I've said so many times before, uh, we, we, need, we need more people that are focusing on the root cause rather than that that reactionary thing, right? I, I mean, there is always going to be a time for uh, litigation, you know, but but if we can focus on that nucleus, focus on the problem before it be, you know, before it becomes a problem. I mean, I'm a business guy. I've been in operations management now for uh, for a decade, and I've been I've been, you know, one of one of the things that I try to focus on so much is. I don't like management by crisis. I don't like to fight battles after I'm already on my heels. I would much rather figure out the problem ahead of time or at least identify what the problem could be and then work to eliminate that as a possibility going forward so that, that again, I'm not fighting that battle on my heels. I'm not ending up in court trying to defend somebody after the damage has been done already. So, so Lori, talk to me uh, a little bit about some of the, uh, some of the action items that the pro human foundation is going to be engaged in to, uh, to, to really bring this to like Brian said, K 12, K through 12 education. What are some of the things that, that the pro human foundation is going to focus on right away for action items to, to really get this into, uh, into the educators or, or to the educators, uh, because we know that there's going to, there's, there's probably going to be pushback because that's just the way that these school boards are right now. So what, uh, uh what, what are some of the things that, that you guys are doing? Well, first of all, you know, we chose to focus on education because education is so powerful. It's so influential. Um, But with that, you also have such a great responsibility. And I also want to say that teachers have it kind of rough in the classroom right now. And so Mm -hmm. if there is anything that we can do to help them navigate tricky waters, anything that we can do to support educators, that's what we want to do. And so our programs will be focused on, uh, will be focused on, uh, on on a new set of curriculum. Our um, we will also be um, offering uh, training as well as educator grants. Um, so we will have opportunities for educators to um, to apply for grants um, that will enable them and empower them to apply pro-human principles in their own classrooms. Um, and so I'm really excited about um, about what our curriculum is going to look like. Um, we will be working on a curriculum that focuses on uh, concepts such as brain science, resilience, conflict resolution, um, relationships, fostering community, all rooted in the pro-human principles. Um, mm-hmm. And um, uh, and then we will also be um, we will also be you'll you'll also see some creative communications campaigns from us as well, um, which we're really excited about too. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, Daryl, I, I know you spent a fair amount of time, amount of your time over the years in classrooms, talking to you know, talking to kids and and things like that. Is this going to be uh, more of a a train the trainer kind of thing, where where you're going to get together with uh, with teachers and administrators and, and and supply them materials, and then they're going to present the material, or 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 is the Pro Human Foundation going to uh, be like a train the trainer or, or, or are you guys going to have 
people who who go out and represent the organization and get into the schools physically and and interact with the kids how's that going to work all of the above there Wilk. um as as a global ambassador for the pro human foundation i will be out in the public in the schools and wherever you know promoting uh this curricula Lori, Letitia, and Brian, we will be more hands-on in designing the curricula. Out of all the mm-hmm. people you have, you have here tonight as your guests, uh, I'm the only one who doesn't have uh, children of my own. And so, you know, I have not been a student in a classroom <laughs> in a number of years, right? So Maybe a few. Yeah, yeah I mean, last year, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm not as, as in tune with what's going on in the classrooms today, other than what I hear from people like Brian, Letitia, and Lori, and others, you know, who are, who have become just, you know, up in arms about some of the things, you know, that are going on. And, you know, when I first heard about it, you know, I was incredulous because, you know, that did not go on when I was in school. But, you right. know, you, you brought up um, a few things earlier where, you, you know, you point out that we're becoming a more and more uh, mixed race society. And Letitia pointed out, you know, her background and, and Bynes' background, et cetera. Well, when I, you know, I'm 65 years of age. And when I was a kid and in school, you know, all people talked about was how great America is, you know, we are the melting pot, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, we were not really the melting pot back then. We talked about it and we praised it. All right. But, um, you know, minorities were very few. You know, this country was probably uh, when I was a kid, 87, 88 percent white. So Mm -hmm. it was not it was not a big melting pot. You know, we had uh, Native Americans who at the time I was a child were only one percent of the population. Today, Native Americans are still one percent of the population. Um, When I was a child, black people were 12 percent of the population. Today, we're 12.9, so we really haven't grown. We are, um, they, they say, 13% now. Uh, Asian, Asian Pacifica Americans were almost 3%. Latino Hispanic Americans were almost 2%. Today, uh, Asian Pacifica Americans are almost 6%, and Latino Hispanic Americans are 17 point something percent. So, yes, we are becoming that melting pot that we praised so much back in the day. But now that we are becoming it, people are freaking out about it because they never thought it would come to this point. And I want to point out something to you. This is where all these identitarian politics are coming in, where you're trying to put people in a box. Because, you know, what what I hear from the people that I deal with, and you know the people that I deal with, uh, they're telling me, Daryl, I don't want my grandkids to be brown. You know, they call it the browning of America or white genocide through miscegenation. So there's your identity. They're trying to preserve, you know, whoever they think they are, you know, this race, that race, you know. Where they're mistaken is there is only one race, and it is the human race. And we are the pro-human foundation. We stand for all people. And what what is very concerning to a lot of people, not everybody in America, but a lot of people in America, is this demographic shift that is happening. And it is well predicted uh, in the year 2042, this country will be 50-50, 50% white and 50% non-white. And between 2045 and 2050, it's going to, it's going to flip and whites will become the, will become the minority for the first time in 400 years. While there are a lot of white people in this country who accept that and say, Hey, it's no big deal. It's evolution. It's a change. No big deal. I can deal with it. There are there are those who cannot deal with it. And that's what we're seeing today, where people want to be put into a box or put somebody in a box and they don't understand this mixture and you're and you're defiling your race and et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is where we come in and we have to educate people that we all share the same uh, humanity. We may be unique uh, individuals, but we have that shared humanity. And it's my job, uh, since I don't have, you know, children, I can train the adults right? where right. they uh, create the curricula for the kids. So it's a partnership where we get people together, kids and adults on the same page. 
I love that idea of uh, you know that is the one thing that we all share, right? It's it's it may be the only thing that we all share is is that 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 shared humanity, and you know, uh, Bayan had mentioned uh, you know the fact that that he's he's got got um, ancestry in 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 Mexico and, and and even a little bit from West Africa and things like that, and you know, I think about uh, my ancestry. I mean, I'm I'm like. 80 some percent Dutch. I'm, you know, and, and then there's, there's some Eastern European in there smattered in there and whatever. But the reality is, is, is this, it's, it's like, okay, so all of our ancestry at, at some point, at, at some point in human history, it's, it's going to be, I mean, there is no such thing as purity of race. And, and if anybody thinks that there is, they're, 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 they're delusional. They're, they're, yeah, they're sorely mistaken. It's it's we've all got people that somehow uh, came together from from different places. I mean, it's it's uh, and if you, you know, want to go back far enough, we all came from Africa. From until, Africa, right? Until somebody finds uh, older <laughs> fossil evidence that we all came from China or something, right? Right? Yeah. Until until there's there's something more, but uh, but yeah, you're right. I I. I if they haven't found it by well, I I can't really say that. I was gonna say if they haven't found it by now, but but they're finding new stuff every day, and 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 that's 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 great. So Letitia, talk to me. You know, like like you said, you you your um you know your children are of uh of mixed race in the sense that that your you know your husband's Korean. What are some of the things that that first of all that that you saw in the um within your your school district and and obviously you're in san francisco and and they've they've got all kinds of different things going on out there that 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 i'm sure that that many throughout the country would would find disturbing but but what was your true inspiration in in that sense and in in taking it towards towards the school level what were the some of the things that you guys were experiencing personally uh in in your area and how is the Pro Human Foundation going to uh, address those things specifically? Mm-hmm. Um, well, from what I understand, well, let me start off by saying my my children were and are still in private school. Um, at the time, mm-hmm. they were both in elementary school. Now, my my eldest, my daughter, is now in in high school. Um, but for my daughter, it started in about fifth grade, and for my son, who went to a different school, all boys, my daughter went to all girls. Uh, For my son, it started a little bit younger, I think, in about third grade when they started the identity unit. Um, So uh, I have to say that uh, one of the things, uh, you know, upon discovering this, um, you know, pedagogy by by sheer accident, really, um, the first thing I thought uh, was that this is going to drive a wedge um, within our own family or mm-hmm. potentially mm-hmm. it would. And I was very concerned about that um, because if they are being taught these rigid categories, uh, which of course they don't really fall into a rigid category, but I, I, generally speaking, they will probably be deemed, you know, if you had to do a coin toss as a person of color. Um, so I felt that they were being effectively told that their own mother um, you know, belonged to a, uh, a a group of persons that was, you know, um, oppressing them either indirectly um, or, you know, directly or through participation in this system, which, you know, which held them back. Um, of course, that that bothered me deeply. I mean, I, you know, I love and my who, children. Yeah, I was why wouldn't it, right? Yeah. Um, and it, it also really, it really, I think I almost trivialized. Um, um, my marriage to my husband, um, in the sense that, you know, we weren't to be seen as just two human beings, you know, who met, um, who got along, who fell in love. And I've known my husband since college. Um, but we were rather, you know, representatives of two, you know, two racial groups, um, you know, one of which was actively, you know, uh, you know, oppressing the other. Although, to be honest, the categories are, you know, seem to be changing. And I, I'm not sure if the East Asians remain in the, you know, oppressed category at the moment. Um, but that was my initial reaction. And then, of course, I felt that it, it really is engendering a lot of resentment and anger on all sides. Um, so I did approach um, the school. I approached um, both of my children's schools um, on, on more than one occasion. 
Um, and I saw other manifestations of this as well. I, I, my daughter's school administered the you know, implicit association test um, to the students when they were in, I believe, sixth grade, um, which, of course, I had a bit of an issue with because the, obviously that, that test has been, um, has been um, questioned um, as non-scientific because it's not reliable and it's, it's not very predictive of what you're going to do. Um, but it always comes out, you never get the answer, well, you're not, you're okay, you're fine. You know, you always get, you're, you're biased. It's just a question of in what direction. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So I was, you know, my daughter came home and of course she was biased. Um, and I, of course I did not like that. Um, and I, I approached the school again. And I think it's pretty, it's not unusual. What my, what my kid's school did was not unusual. And again, I, I, I'm, I'm sure it was well-intentioned. I, I, I do not, you know, distrust their, their, their motives. Um, but I, I do think it's part of this much larger trend um, where, you know, private schools, especially those that, uh, you know, that um, are members of the um, NAIS, um, use a, a curriculum that's this, that really doesn't differ all that much from school to school. Um, and so I think what the hope is for the Pro-Human Foundation um, is that we will create an alternative curriculum, you know, to at least one of the ones that is, um, you know, quite popular now, I believe it's called Pollyanna, um, and give schools a choice and give give them a, a glimpse of what anti-racism education can look like if as we believe it is done right, constructively, um, and in a pro-human way. Yeah, no. And, and I, I, I think that's, that's beautiful because I think a lot of times when people hear the word, uh, at least people in the circles that I run in, and this has been my personal experience and which is really at the end of the day, the only thing I can talk to. Right. But, but the, the, when people hear anti-racism and DEI and, and things like that, they think about people, like Ibram X. Kendi and his form of anti-racism, uh, which is using racism to stamp out racism, in my opinion. Uh, at least that's the way that I read it. And I, I think that's so toxic. And, and the, the, you know, kind of going back to the, the boxes and the identitarianism thing, uh, to me, so much of that material that I've gone over does more to promote the us versus them, uh, us versus them, you know, controversies than, than it actually does uh, to bring us together. Uh, so, you know, going with the pro-human approach, the pro-human anti-racism approach, uh, something that's not promoting the us versus them uh, mentality. So, so Brian, talk to me a little bit about that and how, how this, this pro-human approach, it differs from an, you know, that that us versus them and 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 steers that in a different direction sure i mean i think uh letitia mentioned pollyanna which is a uh a curriculum which is very popular with a lot of independent schools um and they do consulting work as well um and and that was the curriculum that that my my children's school in new york had had adopted um and and the curriculum is, I think, what I reacted to initially was um, was just the oversimplification of of some of these complex issues, and in particular, the concept of identity, right? And and it reson- you know, it was it was an important issue for me because you know I have brown skin, my kids, um, my wife is from the former Soviet Union, the kids came out with a skin color closer to hers. You know, so we actually have different skin colors. And so, you know, so when you're teaching children to see their identity as being inherently based on the color of their skin and to see themselves as inherently different, you know, that was quite personal for me. But the other issue, and this I think has become much more relevant um, or much more widely understood, I think, post um, October 7th, is um, there was just a deep-seated anti-Semitism in in the curriculum itself, and and I again I don't know that this was intentional. Um, you know, the, the the woman who who created Pollyanna is actually a Jewish woman. Um, you know, so I I don't know that the intention was to to be anti-Semitic, but but in the curriculum it was lumping um, Jewish people into a white racial group, 
um, you know, which, which A, is not true. You know, not every Jewish person mm -hmm. is, um, you know, has Caucasian ancestry. You know, there are, there are Jewish people who are, have African ancestry. There are Jewish people who have Asian ancestry. Um, you know, so it was something that was teaching ignorance. Um, and, you know, but, but second of all, it was really diminishing, um, you know, the, the recent history of the Holocaust, you know, it, it completely erased, um, you know, the, the almost extermination of the Jewish people. And this is at a school that had about 40% um, Jewish students, you know, so, so to me, that was something that I, I reacted to as well. <clears throat> you know, and I think that that's, that's the inherent flaw with any sort of identity based um, re any sort of reductionist approach to addressing the real issues of racism and prejudice and um, and anti-Semitism and all these other other isms, I think, is that if you take that identity based approach, you are always going to be doing things in a way where where you are dividing people and you are trying to say who's the bigger victim. But if you take the pro-human approach of saying, look, let's take a step back and just recognize first and foremost, every person is a unique individual, right? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can't make any assumptions about somebody just based on what they look like, based on their ancestry. You can, you know, that's just wrong. You, you can't make assumptions about them. And let's not lose sight of the fact that we're all part of one human race. There is only one race, which is the human race. And so if, right. if you take that approach of teaching people unique identity, shared humanity, you're actually going to solve the problem. If you take the identitarian approach, you're going to create more conflict, more divisions. Um, you know, and again, you're seeing it manifest post October 7th, where you have a lot of people now waking up and saying, oh, wait a minute, you know, these, this approach was supposed to end bias and and prejudice, but actually we're seeing that it's creating anti-Semitism, it's creating anti-Asian bias, it's creating um, conflict, it's, it's actually creating anti-Black racism as well. You know, so it's, it's kind of creating the, the, the tools, the solutions that we were given have actually created more racism, not less. And that was, you know, that was kind of my, um, my concern when I first spoke up about this three years ago is, you know, hey, I love the idea. I love the idea of anti-racism. I remember talking to Daryl when we first, you know, came up with the term pro-human. And, and I said to Daryl, I said, Daryl, you know, cause I actually, it was being called anti-racist, you know, Daryl, there's gotta be a better way to be anti-racist. Like what my kid's school is doing is not anti-racist. And Daryl had two points. One, he said, Brian, you really need to be against the ism, not the ist. Um, you know, you because there in the go. end, every person can be redeemed, you know, we can educate people, but, you know, so, but if we're attacking them as, as a racist, then we've shut down communication, but, you know, that doesn't mean we can't, we can't be against the ism. Um, but, you know, let's, let's try to embrace and win over the, the racists and the, and the people who, who we think are ignorant, but, you know, but that means we're going to focus on the ism, not the ist. And the second is, you know, it's really important to define yourself by what you're for, not what you're against. And, and so that's where, you know, where the term pro-human originated, um, you know, and I think just to kind of give a little definition to what, what it means to be pro-human, you know, we've, we've kind of bucketed this in, in three different ways. And this is, this is going to be in the curriculum and this is, you know, this is really you know, what embodies the pro-human approach. And it really comes down to, you know, three sets of core values um, that, that are Im embedded in the pro-human approach. So the first are the pro-human principles, which, you know, which we've defined as fairness, understanding, and humanity. And these are really about societal goals. You know, this, this benefits all of us because fairness, understanding, humanity, this is kind of the the basic ground rules for having a society that is harmonious, right? If you don't have fairness, and understanding humanity, you will not have a just and functioning society, right? Mm -hmm. The second um, group of core values that we're focused on 
are more at the individual level. And these are gratitude, optimism, and grit, which is really about the, it's the psychology of thriving, right? There's science that, that shows that, you know, for an individual to flourish and, and to be a fully functioning member of society and to reach their maximum potential, gratitude over grievance is, is preferred, right? Optimism right. over pessimism and, and grit over just giving up, right? So, so those are the other three core values at the individual level. And then the last are three, three core values that I think Daryl has exemplified, um, you know, through his life's work, which are, are really about positive connections. And these are curiosity, courage, and compassion. Um, you know, and these, these are the core values that really help to create relationships, healthy, positive relationships between people, between people. And this is how Daryl has been successful in, in actually connecting with people who hated him just because of the color of his skin. And then they came to understand him. He developed positive connections with him through that combination of curiosity, courage, and compassion. Um, you know, and, and that's really how you change the world, in our, in our opinion, is, is by you know, as many people as possible not just talking about these values, but living these values, right? These, these nine core values, right? The societal values, the individual values, and these, um, these interpersonal relationship core values. No, and that makes a lot of sense. I, I mean, uh, you know, obviously on, on the D-Rate the Hate podcast, I'm constantly talking about, uh, you know, bettering the world one attitude at a time, right? Starts with us as an individual. It's our own mindset. There's so much that's out of our control, but as long as we start with us, recognize ourselves as the one thing that we can change, we can change the world in doing so because that's going to spread. And I love these, you know, these nine principles that fall, you know, fall into here, the the societal, the individual, and then the interpersonal. It it, it just makes Again, it, it makes so much sense and it goes right to the to the core of the issue. And, and if you focus on that as a baseline for 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 from which you're going to work. The 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 possibilities are, are, are endless. And, and I, I mean, I, I, I do love that. And then and then the fact that that, you know, we've got a, a, a legendary icon like Daryl Davis is the you know, global ambassador for a mission like this, you know, getting out there and sharing, you know, I think so much, uh, so much of what we see today in society is people, they're talking about stuff that's happened, you know, in theory, but never really worked in real life. But we, we've got, like I said, we've got somebody like Daryl Davis, an icon in the space of, you know, race relations and, and, and reconciliation and redemption for radicals and, and, and things like that, showing and, and, and providing true life examples of how this, the, these principles are not just something that looks good on paper or, 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 or will, you know, is, is a theory thought up in, in some intellectual elite or, or, or some academic institution that said, yeah, this looks great. We're going to make this, you know, we're going to make this work. This is, this is real life, real life examples and, and how this thing can work. And then, and then just the battling of the, the, uh, against that us versus them thing. I mean, obviously y'all know on this, on this, this, uh, everybody on this panel knows that, that my biggest thing or the thing that I work so much on these days is, is, is in the depolarization space and, and, you know, polarization isn't nearly as big a problem right if there isn't an us versus them if there isn't separate buckets there's nothing to be polarized i mean there's always going to be things that we don't ag agree on and, and disagreement is good and diversity of thought is good but it doesn't always have to be toxic yeah and i, th yeah. I think it comes down to people people dehumanizing people who they see as different, you know, people who right. they disagree with. And, and I think once you dehumanize, that's when horrible things can happen, you know, and, and that's what I, you know, that's, that's what scares me, you know, cause I, I think we've seen it in history 
and and we think it can't happen here but it it does happen it is happening you know and i and i think that once you start dehumanizing whether it's because somebody is politically different from you or has a different skin color than you once you start to see that person as less than human um i, I think that's when really bad things can happen so you know i think that's where you know being pro human starts with embracing the fact that we are we are all brothers and sisters. We are all part of one human race. To add into that, um, I want to point out, you know, seeing somebody's skin color or their religion or whatever, no, we should not make a, assumptions about who they can be or what they can become, you know, or, this, or put them in some kind of a box. But we also need to recognize uh, that there can be certain identifiers uh, that go along with those skin colors and religions that that uh, uh, and experiences, and we don't want to disavow somebody's uh, experience. You know, um, if if I if I know somebody is Jewish, I know not not every Jewish person has experienced anti-Semitism, but I know if somebody is Jewish, there is a chance that person has experienced anti-Semitism. If somebody is a black American of my age, uh, I know that person has experienced some kind of racism at some point in their life. And so I, mm -hmm. I cannot disavow and just say, oh, you know, I'm not gonna make any assumptions. Um, but now if somebody is, is black from another country, it's a, it's a different story. You know, they may not have experienced the same things that, that we experienced over here. So, you know, we wanna be very cautious you know, when we do make assumptions, because we're always going to assume something. It's just like, you know, if you call somebody on the, you, you call some company on the phone to complain about something or ask if they have a certain product. As soon as the person answers the phone, you don't see that person, but you're making assumptions as to what that person looks like. That person right. sounds like an old right. lady, a white lady, a black lady. That person sounds uh, uh, Indian, you know, or what it, we're always making assumptions. So that is something that we always do. Uh, a lot of times we are wrong, but but it is important to recognize that certain people do have certain histories, and we can't just toss them aside as though they never happen and expect that person to behave normally. That's just like you know you don't you know you would not expect a a a, a uh, an adult who has been sexually abused as a kid for years by somebody to 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 not manifest that later on. So you have to be you know cognizant of somebody's history as well well yeah and, and and i think the word that i'll go back to that buying used is oversimplification right yes i mean every individual while we are individuals we all have our own stories we have our own past we have you know some of us have have experienced great violence and pain and, and different things throughout our life and those different experiences will carry on with us throughout life but no single thing about any of us as an individual can define who we are as human beings. Absolutely. It is not, or it is not the entirety of our identity. Yes. You know, it's just like, I'm a white male Christian conservative, right? But no, n none of those individual things make up my entire identity. So each time somebody puts puts me in one of those boxes and assumes they know everything about me because I'm a conservative. So so they they automatically assign all these tags to me as a conservative or a white male or a Christian or whatever or you know in your case a a, a you know a black man or in Bayan's case say you know if if they want to you know say oh well he, you know Bayan's a Mexican you know whatever you know, or, or white women or, or black women or Jewish people, whatever. You cannot take any of those things and oversimplify it and assume that just because you see one trait or pick up something about them on the phone, now you know everything. You, you've already started a, uh, a scenario in your mind by which you think that that, that interaction is going to end. And so right. often people are wrong. Exactly. And, and <laughs> so, exactly. so, well, you know, uh, I was uh, talking not too long ago 
uh, with the former head of the uh, NSM, the National Socialist Movement, which is the uh, the largest neo-Nazi organization in this country. Uh, his name is uh, Jeff Scoop. And uh, I, mm-hmm. myself, and a, and a Muslim woman, a great filmmaker named Dia Khan, helped get him out of that. He was the mm-hmm. leader of that mm-hmm. organization for 25 years. And now for the last half decade, he's been working very hard to de-radicalize people uh, still in those kinds of supremacist movements and uh, ideology and prevent young people from going down that road. Anyway, mm-hmm, he was telling mm-hmm. me not too long ago that he ran into, into some people from Cameroon and they were telling him that they didn't realize that they were black until they came here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we laugh, but, but it's true. And right, I, right. I, know, I, I, lived, I lived in Africa. I lived in Africa for 10 years, four years in Ethiopia, two years in Ghana, two years in Guinea, two years in Senegal. And visited many African countries, you know, in between. And they don't consider themselves black. They just consider themselves, you know, African. You know? Just so, another human being. Don't... Exactly. And that's where we need to get. And this mm-hmm. is what the mm-hmm. Pro-Human Foundation is about. And like Brian was saying, you know, uh, we want to be not against the ist, the racist. That's, you know, that's the person. But the ism, the racism, the message. So in other words, you know, don't kill the messenger. Let's condemn the message. Don't kill the messenger, condemn the message. It's just, you know, I just recently had, and and yeah, I love Jeff Scoop. He's been on the podcast a number of times. He's a good friend of mine as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, I just recently had a conversation on the podcast with Jonathan Roush, and him and I were talking about, you know, don't don't uh, don't don't kill the person, kill you know, kill the bad idea, but don't kill the person. You know, we we have to we have to work hard, and that's why I love that whole concept of. You know, go after the ism, but not the not the ist. The ist, you know, we need to stamp out the ism, but we need to try and redeem the ist, right? Exactly. Um, like, uh, you know, redemption for radicals, the whole concept of that. Uh, you know, I got into that in my first conversation a long, long time ago with Jeff Scoop. And, and I've had, had a number of, and he's actually even uh, uh, guest hosted a po- uh, D-Rate the Hate podcast for me a little while back, talking to another former NSM member. So people can, can reach back and, and, and look at that but uh, or listen to that. But, but the whole concept, right, is, is if you don't assign a monster tag to the person, and realize that that even though they are, are are maybe stuck in an evil ideology, like you know groups like the NSM or 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 um, you know the Ku Klux Klan or or, or any number of uh, of whatever you want to call them, white supremacist movements, but if you can at least find that smidgen of humanity in them, and then try to connect with that, and and work towards um work work with them towards you know some type of redemption some type of uh, of reconciliation and and show them a, a path forward to to getting away from that uh yeah stamp out the ism uh but but don't condemn the ist um i i like i like that that a lot uh just we we only have so much time on this rock and 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 you know if we if we remember that as as human beings we all have something within us you know we we we've got a soul we've got uh we've got our own infinite value as human beings and some people you know some people it's just going to take more work i mean some people to to find out what it is within them that that makes one makes them one of god's children i mean like i said i'm a christian and i believe we're all made in the image of god and as my my friend, one of the founders of uh, of Braver Angels, David Blankenhorn, says, you know, we all have our blind spots, but not one of us is not worth talking to. You know, if we reach down and, and groups like the Pro Human Foundation can help others get to that root cause, find a way in to to deal with the problems because before they do become catastrophic existential threats, you know, within each individual's life we can we can really change the world we you know like i try to do here you know bettering mindsets better you know one attitude at a time bettering the world one attitude at a time you know what the pro-human foundation is is trying to do show each person your 
you are a human being with infinite value and and if you see the humanity in all people and and and, and not focus so much on the identitarianism or identitarian way of thinking you know get out of the box think as as an individual work with other individuals so so let's let's kind of go around the uh, I, I know we're probably getting a little close to the end of our time here today but let's kind of go around and 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 do a quick check out and 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 just what is the the parting thought but we'll start with Lori again the parting thought from uh uh from 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 our conversation here today and and you know when is when is the the actual launch of uh pro human foundation and and you know what people uh what people can can expect right off the bat and and uh what the you know the parting words that you want to leave people with today you start off for well um first of all wilk i just can't thank you enough for having us on um i just appreciate it so much we've been so excited about this and um this has been so fun it's just been such a pleasure and just a real honor too so thank you very much for having us um and so um, as to when we are when we are launching, we are launching at the end of February, um, and so you'll be seeing some um, you'll be seeing plenty of emails and communications and social media about that, um, and we'll be unveiling our website. And so um, there's there's lots that's going to be happening um, here um, at the um, at the end of February, and it's. It's a lot, and so um, a lot to do. yeah, a lot. It's a lot to do for sure. Um, and um, uh, so, in parting thoughts, you know, I I want to say that um, uh, I'm I'm always on the I'm I'm always on the lookout for what pro human means and what pro human is. And like you, Will, we are we're interested in um. A, it, it, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a lot of things, including, um, I, I feel that we are in the uh, in the bridging the divide space, like like you are. Um, and um, Bayan sent me uh, the other day uh, something that he saw at a at a coffee shop. Uh, it was a picture of a poem that was written in a window and of a, of a coffee of a coffee shop, and it read. Um, uh, Republicans are red, Democrats are blue, but it doesn't matter. We love you. And I said, "Oh, Brian, that's the most pro-human thing I've I've seen in ages." Um, and uh, because it really spoke to this idea that that you know we are all different, we are all individuals, and 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 that's okay. But let's remember that there is there's something bigger and, and more important and more fundamental that connects us all. And so, um, and, and, and so to your point, Wilk, that we're, we're all made in the image of our creator. We are, and we are all imperfect, but we're all also very worthy of, of, of love and redemption. And, um, and, and, and that to me is what, um, that to me is what pro human means. Beautiful, beautiful. Patricia? Yeah, I mean, I think Lori said it said it really, uh, really perfectly. Um, and I mean, for me, an important takeaway is that, you know, the, the the four of us at present who are, you know, chiefly involved in this foundation, and and there will be there will be more for certain. Um, but you know, we're four different people. We all come from very different backgrounds, um, and yet we commonly saw that there was a need for this foundation, and we're creating right. something together. Um, you know, despite. And, and in some ways, maybe because of, of our different backgrounds, um, I am very, very excited um, for our curriculum to, um, to really um, be in the works and under serious development. Um, and again, as Lori said, I hope everybody who's listening um, keeps an eye out for emails and other communications, um, checks out the website and you know, uh, keeps updated as, as to what we're doing and, and, and where we are in the process. Yes, and I'm assuming you're going to have a, a newsletter and and things like that, right? That that's going to be coming out on a regular basis, talking about what what you guys are doing with the Pro Human Foundation, how people can get involved, and and things like that, right? So, and uh, Daryl, parting words for uh, the DTH listeners. Sure. Well, you know, we all are pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. You know, when you buy that jigsaw puzzle and you dump it out of the box. 
Every piece is a different color. Every piece is cut differently. But the puzzle is beautiful when all those pieces fit together. That's what makes the puzzle. All right. And, you know, e you know even as, as individuals, we all can contribute. Whether you're on the front lines, the back lines, the side lines, just get online. All right. And be on some line and do something. Come join us at ProHumanFoundation.org. You know, we can use you regardless of your station in life. Uh, I, I am a trained professional musician. That's how I make my living. I'm not a sociologist or psychologist. But if I can accomplish the things that I've done, you know, being a rock and roll piano player, anybody can do it. And our, mm -hmm. our country, our society can only become one of two things. It can become one, that which we sit back and watch it become, or two, that which we stand up and make it become. So it's all an individual question that we have to answer ourselves. Do we want to sit back and see what our country becomes or do we want to stand up and make it become what we want to see? Personally, I want unity in the community. Unity in the community, man. I love it. I love it. Bye and take us home, man. What do you got? <laughs> so I, I mean, I started off just expressing my, my love for these these uh, three three individuals um, who are on this uh, podcast with us, um, and and I want to close with that. I just I'm, I'm so grateful for um, you know for their friendship. I'm I'm grateful for this opportunity to really you know I think bring something positive into the world, and um, and I'm excited for for what we're going to be doing. Um, I, I wanted to share a, a quote that um, that it really has spoken to me for a long time. Um, and you know, as we were talking about, you know, being against the ism and not the ist, I think um, you know, I I keep coming back to this to this quote, and it's um, it's from Martin Luther King. Um, there is some good in the worst of us, and some evil in the best of us. When we discover this, we are less prone to hate our enemies. And and I think this is very true and i think that as human beings we we tend to be tribal you know i just i think it's it's just part of our genetic makeup um and and i think that what we what we are at risk of and and i think especially those of us who don't acknowledge that we're at risk of this i think those are the ones who are the most at risk of it frankly is um is is ignoring that basic truth that they're there is evil in our friends and there's good in our enemies and 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 we should mm -hmm, we should mm -hmm. really recognize that and and ultimately we're all human you know and and so we should find ways to connect with each other so um so yeah so i'm i'm just really excited for um you know for for the launch of the pro human foundation and and for all the good work that that this group and the others who will be part of this are going to do yeah i'm 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 so excited for it myself i mean the uh the idea that uh that, that i i i always love to see great people coming together working together in unison to to do things that are going to make this world a better place and and the idea again and you know just and thanks for the backstory on the on, on you know how pro human you know what we are for not necessarily what we are against and and the idea that, you know, focusing on our common humanity and, and one of the things that you brought up there, Brian, in, in that MLK quote, that, that it, it really makes me think uh, of something that, that I, I, I key on in a lot of the things that I talk about. And, and that's, you know, people are, are so quick, you know, going back to the oversimplification thing, right? People are so quick to put us in a box and then within that box they will use the you know the worst of us as an example by which to define all of us and and i think that's that's a cautionary thing i, I want to to make people realize when they think about pro human is is people there's always going to be people out there that try to put us in boxes and and whatever label they want to put on that box even if they do don't fall prey to that idea that we have to look within that box, take the worst within that box, and then cast that as the 
definition of all people in that box. You know, yeah. we're all we're all good in some way. We're all bad in some way. We're imperfect human beings, but we are all still human beings. We're all worthy of love. We're all worthy of dignity. And at some point, some way, we all have to get along because we've only got one rock to spend our time on. So right. thank you so much. You guys, uh, let me you guys just, are uh, so great. Give you give you a quote from um, Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, who said, "I'm a paraphrase." She said, "If they don't have a seat for you at the table, bring a folding chair." <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely right. Well, you guys all have a chair at my table any day, any time, and uh, and I love you all, and and I look forward to uh, uh, to many more things. I'd love to collaborate more with the Pro Human Foundation. And uh, just encourage everybody to, uh, uh, as soon as uh, as soon as we get the official launch date, you'll definitely see it in the show notes and check it out. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Friends, if there's anything in this episode that provided exceptional value to you, please make sure to hit that share button. Share it with your friends. Share it far and wide. And of course, if you haven't done so already. Be sure to subscribe right from our website so you can get the Derate the Hate podcast sent to your email inbox every week. So this is Wilk wrapping up for the week saying get out there. Be kind to one another. Be grateful for everything that you've got. And remember, it's up to you to make each and every day the day that you want it to be. If there is something that you would like to share with me, you can catch me on most social media platforms or you can email me directly, wilk at wilksworld.com. With that, my friends, I am going to back on out of here, and we will catch you next week. Take care.